Hello and welcome to the weekly podcast, The 8-Bit and the Debaters. Uh, my name is Rob and I'm here this week with the lovely, adorable uh, Paddy. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm, I'm here with Alistair. Hiya. And I'm here with John as well. <laughs> Why was that okay. so, so discussed? I know, John. Right? John. So this week, this week we're going to be arguing about what is the best um, video game set in space. But uh, before Ooh, we do that, space. we're going to do the icebreaker. The icebreaker. Yes, the icebreaker is the part of the show where we uh, just open up a little um, a question, just a bit of a warm up, where we don't have to argue about. It, we just, you know, it's a bit of a chat, guys. It's informal. Calm down. It's gonna be all right. No. Um, so the question for this week is: What is your favourite um, gaming uh, system of all time? I know "system" is quite a broad word. I think that's just so John can feel included. Um, <laughs> so, um, speaking of John, let's start there, and I can probably already know what it is. But let's ask John. John, what is the best? video um, gaming system of all time computer um no computer. <laughs> computer. <laughs> no to be fair i went i went with um to, to be i thought i'd go along the console lines so oh, skip out then. the xbox one um i'll be i'll be yeah i've been quite impressed by it to be honest i think yeah yeah to the jump from 360 to one was quite considerable in terms of graphics in terms of the accessibility of things other than gaming on there it's the kind of the, the whole market's at all media all in one media center which i think they do a pretty good job plus mm. i think what's the kind of key bit for me is the game pass which is kind of a big uh in opposition to the whole drm nazism that we used to have in in the, in the gaming industry um it's it definitely mm. calmed down on that so yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's one of those things where a lot of people probably had their criticisms at the start when Xbox was um, touted as a media hub. Mm-hmm. But I quite, I quite enjoy the fact it's a media hub. I watch <laughs> all of my, all of my things on it. So, um, screw you, wider um, gaming audience. What the <laughs> fuck do you know? Um, so next, we're going to go to the beautiful Alistair. Oh, John, Alistair. Uh, John, um, John stole my answer. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, so I'm, you can have, you, and he's so happy about it. Oh, for, for, for a sake of variety, I'm going to go for uh, a console that I do think is slightly underrated, and I'm going to go for the GameCube. Ooh, I know. Okay. I, I like. I feel in, in all of Nintendo's systems, it's kind of been missed out. But I, I think it had some brilliant games on it, and it, the I, games were so tiny. They were so tiny. <laughs> it was. Huge. It was a really easily portable system as well. It was yeah. Brilliant. It, it had a handle. Which I know, great. like they, which they, is handy because if if there was someone walking on the street, you could hit them. Right. <laughs> it was it was chunky. I mean, yeah. But it brought us some absolutely great games, and it did provide a nice step from the the sixty four into the GameCube, and then the Wii after. It kind of felt like a nice stepping stone between the two systems. I don't mm. know why it felt so good to transfer to the Wii after that. But it just it worked, and it like felt right. yeah, and they managed to actually sort out the controller, so it wasn't some weird like fiddly thing that you had to hold like the, the 64 they actually mm. had a, a proper box standard or now we consider normal controller and yeah i think it was mm. it was one of the just one of those underrated ones nice nice uh so finally we're gonna go to paddy uh paddy what do you what is your most favorite um uh, gaming system of all time well unlike john i'm gonna be definitely reverting to type so it's gonna be a sony playstation console and i'm gonna go for the ps3 uh, nice, nice just because it just had so many ridiculously awesome games on it um the the whole like and it, it it went such a long way as well in in like in like over the years that we had it so to think that we got the first uncharted game second the third and the last of us all on that one console like just how, how far the technology came how far the games went um the exclusives like just everything everything about it and it had definitely had its problems um it was ridiculously expensive when it launched the online wasn't Anything like what you'd get on the Xbox, but great console with an amazing game lineup, and and that's that that's my one. No, cool, cool, brilliant. Uh, I think for me, I think I, I think it's something that you guys probably should worry would see coming. I'm going to go with the a Sega Dreamcast. Uh, uh, yeah. Just just a personal thing for me. It had a very unique a library of games. Um, it was a it was. Well, a console that came out at the wrong time, and it, it unfortunately saw the end of um, a Sega, but it had some brilliant, brilliant, um, brilliant, um, brilliant um, games on it. And it's probably the console that transformed me from someone who plays on um, plays on a video game to someone who fucking eats eats them. <laughs> no, you don't do that. Your games for breakfast. I, I eat them for breakfast, love. So yeah, uh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> that'd be cool. That's cool. Uh, so yeah, that's the end of the icebreaker, and now we're going to move on to the next part. Um, uh, um, the next part of the show um, that I can't say. The master beat. Yes, this is the part of the show where we like to argue about uh, whatever the hell it is we're arguing about this week, which I can't remember off the top of my head, so I'm going to look a little bit over here. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, so this week we're going to argue about what is the best video game that is um, set in space. Uh, probably, I, I kind of have a reputation for trying to... I remember when we used to um, um, pitch games a lot more, and nearly every game that I pitched was um, set in space. So Bears. I figured I'd, I'd be a good one. Um, um, to judge this. Uh, so the way we do this then is we do a pitch round, which involves us just going quickly, quickly round the three, uh, the three of these. Um, you feel abused. These, um, yeah, I know. <laughs> three of these, um, uh, three of these, um, um guys. Uh, where they just have around about um one um, a minute to tell us about uh what game they've chosen and why, and then after that we open up the floor for everyone to have a bit of a um a fight about it. Um, but this week I think I'm going to start with Alistair. Well, Alistair. This week, I've uh, picked a game I played. Yay! Oh, yay! <laughs> yay! So, uh, what is uh, the best video game a set in space? Oh, wait, why, why is Paddy threatening me? <laughs> putting you off. I'm wasting your time. <laughs> uh, but mine would be Dead Space. The, the, fir- the first one. It's... <laughs> oh, there ends my pitch. <laughs> yeah, I didn't expect this question. Um, I think it's, it was a brilliant... Because uh, I think last week it was, was the scariest game, and that that was kind of up there because it, it did have that thriller, scary aspect to it. But I mean, after you played it a bit, it kind of just became fun, and mm. just the whole you had the storyline, but you also kind of were just going around, you were exploring the, the spaceship, trying to figure out what was going on. You had the variety of weapon sets that you could pretty much determine how you played the game because you could level up your weapons, but you didn't through one playthrough you could never level up everything. So you could like you, you could carry on your stuff through the next playthrough and just find out different weapons but you could either carry around a buzz saw you could have a flamethrower you could just level up the plasma pistol or the plasma cutter which just obliterated everything so i think that you had several different play styles the replayability of the game was ridiculously high because you could just play it over and over again a new game or just carry on all all the different the the game again and just become overly powerful. Brilliant, Al. That was a fantastic pitch. So, <laughs> yeah. Now we're gonna. So, <laughs> you, you had a minute. You had a minute, mate, and it was done. I can't uh, do it. So now we're gonna move on to the lovely John. John, do you want to tell us uh, what game you've chosen and why? It's in space, so it's StarCraft standard. Uh, you've got Terran humans mm-hmm. zerg insects protoss religious fanatics who want to nuke everything and justify it in the name of their god sounds familiar at the moment um <laughs> so yeah the the, the storyline was phenomenal um following from starcraft through to starcraft 2 um and the multiplayer is superbly balanced and the the it's very um intuitive in terms of how how they work um where you can with your different strategies and how the meta game evolved um, the last thing I wanted to add to it is that they built a ranking system that uh, is was unrivaled and is still one of the best ones in terms of Grandmaster, Master, uh, Diamond, Gold, you know, all the way down mm-hmm. to Bronze. And it, it gave you a sense of real achievement when you went up from Silver to Gold or so forth, so forth. Kept you going and playing competitively to your, to okay. your ability. Okay, cool. And finally, we're going to hear from um, a Paddy. Uh, Paddy, what do you think is the best game that's been um, set in space? So I've gone for Mass Effect 2 um, because I think it's probably the best out of the the three the three games in the series, and it's like basically I think the the epitome of of like the space soap opera, like the, the space opera, like that kind of amazing story with this group of like friends who you know become family by the end of it. I just really like the way um, so it's like Fast and Furious. So basically, I I, just, I really like the, I just really like the way that um, you know you. you how well you got to know the different characters how important they were to you like you meet new people along the way and they become part of your group and like how your the relationship you build with them like will basically directly relate to how the game like will finish and the story that the story that you get um and it just really varied and i think it like kind of towed a nice line between like a traditional um like rpg but then also kind of a more um shoot like a like a, a, sh- a third person shooter game and i think it kind of had that night like better balance than i think the third one which was just a bit too much of a shooter um mm-hmm. but like i think it's all centered around the relationships you could build and, and you know for me the best time i had with that game wasn't necessarily the missions but it was a time i spent between them just checking in with all the crew seeing how they were all doing um building those relationships and i it's it's, it's like not not often that you know you get a game 
you get a <laughs> you get a sure. game where like that. John doesn't like games with characters. <laughs> Sounds uh, like t- Tinder and Sims. <laughs> it's pretty much pretty what much, it is. Much. You can fuck aliens. Cool. It's that's that's what it's about. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so yeah, we've heard all three of the games now. So we're gonna go into the bit where everyone's gonna have a, um, a go at each other, and hopefully um, let them um, try and cause some tears. That'll be fun. And uh, um, and when we uh, when I think that it's all over, and I've come to a choice about which one that I think is the best, you're gonna hear this noise. Like a blind man at an orgy, I was gonna have to feel things out. <laughs> so uh, anyone, any ideas of what film that's from? I'll play it again. Hang on. Oh, no, I haven't. <laughs> I don't know that one. That was last week's. Like a blind man at an orgy, I was going to have to feel things out. Like a blind man at an orgy, I'm going to have to feel things out. No, it's yeah. from um, from um, The Naked Gun, a 33 mm. I was going to say Naked yeah, uh, very close, but yeah. no. Um, so that's the sound that you'll hear when it's all over. Um, so yeah, I suppose from there, bye. Right, well, so uh, the, I, I I haven't played fuck all of these two games. Mass Effect <laughs> 2 sounds atrocious, I'm going to be honest. But uh, mm. one of the things I do is I look at Metacritic and I go to the, the critical ones. And one of my favourite things that I got was Dead Space 2 was that the PC port was absolutely awful. Um, it feels like it was pulled over kicking and screaming. And I'll just add this quote, a, a quote, scariest thing about this game are the controls, unquote. <laughs> Wait, was that Dead Space one or two? Uh, one, I think. From what I can see, I, I looked for Dead Space. I didn't even know there was a second one. I'll be honest. <laughs> I think there are three in the series now. There's a three. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But yes, yeah. Terrible controls. Repetitive gameplay. I'm just reading off a book here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit! Got a book. <laughs> You're reading what someone on the internet said. It must be true. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what sites is and how do I add my review? <laughs> now let me read the next review. Isn't that isn't that space just a bit kind of dull? No, they're just kind of repetitive and and like I mean, just it's, wandering it's not... around. Oh no, a spooky monster! Shoot the monster! Oh no, a spooky monster! Shoot the monster! Oh <laughs> no! Oh, yeah, not... ah, <laughs> spooky monster! Shoot the monster! <laughs> I'm glad to let you finish that. It really ties it all together. <laughs> I don't know, because no, I, mean, cause, cause I watched, I watched you played it on that. Well, again, um, on like on the channel, and yeah, it just didn't. It doesn't nothing, nothing about it really kind of inspired me. Even like back when it came out, I just obviously I don't, I don't like scary, scary games. I don't play them, so it was never going to be uh, top of my list. But there's just something about it that just seemed a bit kind of. Me. You can I mean, swap like... rats on the monster. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Different game, John. Different game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, like, it's not really uh, that kind of dull and repetitive. I mean, yeah, you can play the same, literally the same game over and over again. But like the first time you play it, it's unknowing. It's tense. Like it's yeah, it still has that scary aspect to it. So, I mean, I guess if that's not your cup of tea, it's, you're not going to go into it. But you do have that that just thrill to it because you, the sometimes the, the xenomorphs can by like the alien the parasite zombie thingies can be dead on the ground. And as you walk past them, they pop up and they'll attack you. So you have to be like super cautious of everything you see. Nothing is safe, type thing. And then they like pop out from the vents. There'll be <laughs> ones that you can't you can't fight, but be like running around. Every time you turn a corner, it'll be ahead of you. You've got to be like on your guard, and it keeps you intrigued in the game and just like keep going because you're on edge like throughout the entire first playthrough. And if you haven't played it for a while, then you forget what little bit's happening. And then the second playthrough, if you carry on the game. You can upgrade the shit, and then it becomes like ridiculously fun. And you get a foam pistol if you do things, like a foam finger pistol. That's pretty cool. And it's it's like little, it's little bits. Once you get comfortable with like what the game is, and kind of aren't watching every little thing, you're like, all right, there's a monster there, there, and there. So I can now look around the room a bit more. And there, are, you find things, you find secret rooms, you find um, like little lockers that you could open up, and just get a bit more equipment, so you don't have to be as conservative. Maybe it's one of your other playthroughs. So, so it's a video game, basically, what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, it's like you. <laughs> All of these are video games, Paddy. I can yeah, use that for everything. Items, and you can pick things up. That and you like, can find things. And you can stop things. That's what I've taken down from that. Um, John, can you describe an hour's gameplay of StarCraft? Like, what would it look like? Just, in, just, in, just briefly, what, 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 would, the, what would you do Space. in like a, an, hour, an hour of StarCraft? Uh, well, in the single player, you would it's it's all very much story driven. So to be, I uh, know you need to go colon, go colonize that planet and then attack those aliens over there. And is that 
That's kind of boring. Click, 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 click. Yes, lots click, of clicking. Wa watch, yep. watch, watch, lots watch of them fighting. Click, the... click, click. Yes, click, yeah. There's a lot. Um, there's kind of two aspects to it. They call it macro and micro management. Um, I referred to it in the previous hmm. episode from last like, week. Sounds like sounds like uh, work. Carry on. Yes, yeah, yeah no, it's very, very. Yeah, the, the the competitive aspect of it um, is is intense. It's one of the few computer games that actually I found raised my heart rate um, quite substantially to the point that you had to have to take breaks with it because it was so intense. It just really it sucks you in and keeps you going. Um, the storyline as well is, is, is really good. Um, the replayability is, is decent as well. You can kind of branch off and go in different directions in terms of the storyline, um, the overall storyline, shall I say. Um, rather than the, the, the monsters being in exactly the same place as you walk through, like, and then, yeah, you can look around for what whatever it is and you find in Dead Space. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's a, it's very much, um, I mean, there's the three different races, um, the humans, the insects, and the, the, the kind of religious zealots that were also aliens. Um, and there's quite a bit you can do how you... A lot of it's about speed and building up and trying to find the weaknesses uh, of the... the um, the type of play that the, your rival is using. So is it is it a game that you like? Do the story? Is it like a long story? Do you kind of do it? Is it a short thing that you do over and over again? It's different. How does it? No, no. I know. Long, I know nothing long, about it. There's a long story. There's a lot of lore that goes on um, in the in the Blizzard franchises itself. Mm -hmm. Their lore is, in my opinion, um, unrivaled. They are very very good with what they got. I mean, you know, needs. So, I mean, that kind of also gives side. it. That also gives it kind of a negative side to it because you can't almost like casually play these games because there's like you don't quite enjoy the story and understand it because it's not just a story within itself it attaches to like especially the like um, kind of using the warcraft because i know that as an example like it attaches to previous games and sort of like other little bits of lore that aren't within sort of that that game series so it kind of, it. you you can't just come on as a casual player hop in and go oh, i'm gonna play a bit of starcraft you'd be like what like what, why why is this so important and you kind of the story gets a bit lost on you I understand what what you're saying there, but I disagree because that you can ignore the law. You can go in and do your it will say no. You need to go over there and capture these things and bring them back, or escort this person from point A to point B, or destroy those over there and then destroy these ones over here. Um, you can completely ignore the law and just destroy or do I mean, whatever. As, you, as you, happy as I am with mindless, as happy as I am with mindless destruction, and don't get me wrong, I absolutely love it. Sometimes that like, you need a bit of an incentive to to kind of get involved with the game, like you you kind of get behind the character or whatever race you're playing and you're like all right i'm attacking these guys because of this and like this mm -hmm. this war is going on because of that instead of just i'm gonna attack these guys now i'm gonna attack those guys it's there isn't the incentive and in, in like the want of play it's just sort of i'm just going to do this for no apparent reason I, I no i still disagree with you on that one i mean one of the things with the blizzard games you see it through all the way through them diablo um, Warcraft, Starcraft, I think even Overwatch has an element of it, is that their the cutscene cinematics are phenomenal. Um, I believe one of the, the videos that you can see on Twisted Bar channel um, of the, you, you use, um, I think it was in the top 10 cinematics or top 7 or whatever mm. it was that you put together. Um, you use uh, Diablo, I think it was, and I think you use um, a Starcraft introdu introduction one um and they're absolutely i mean if you've not seen them just have a look they, they really do put their they're all into the, the the kind of the story to draw you in to get you behind your character as as to quote you or, or the race or where you are at that point or you feel bad because that person's just gone and been left on the alien world or so forth so forth how much does just it cost just, how much just, does it cost just, sorry uh, yeah, go, just go interject, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. just very, very uh, uh, conscious of time. I've heard a lot about owls and jaws, but I haven't heard much about um, a paddy. So if we can move, well, on I just, I just wanted to ask one question: like, How much does it cost to get the full go. Starcraft experience? Uh, it's a all in. So you, when when your first guy came out, I think I got it for like twenty six pounds. I think if you bought it on the website, it was thirty thirty full price. Um, we we do enjoy cheaper games on the PC side of things. Okay, so it's not like Warcraft where it's like a. No, no, no. no, no okay, all right, no, cool. the, the, no. That's Warcraft's only one that's subscription based. No, okay. Um, so I'll st steer it towards Mass Effect Two, yeah. which I know nothing about, and it sounds like Tinder, as I say. But apparently, you can't choose your same-sex mates. That's something that I saw all over. That when I, when I googled Mass that's Effect a, that's Two, that's definitely a turn off for John. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. If I'm I want to make, pretty sure you can is that choose. True? I'm pretty sure you can. No, because th- there was a big, le- there was a lesbian like that was the the lesbian sex scene was in Mass Effect Two, the one that like sh- oh, shut the internet down for a little while. Who um, chose, um, chose, let me if you down. chose a Kaiden in Mass Effect One, you could a romance him, I think. As well. Yeah, and also there was a. I think you could romance a guy as well. I think if you like as Shepard, I think I think you had full the full option. Okay, I, think, uh, I, I, ret- I retract my point. I think like one of the negatives kind of just comes from the fact of Mass Effect Three, like the massive like because you you have a lot of I'll explain why what, what I'm saying <laughs> in my very long winded way, because like all the choices you make in Mass Effect Two, like you're trying to do it in a very like personal way. You're kind of like this is my story, this is how I'm creating it, and I mean correct me if I'm wrong, but they kind of choose one of the endings for you in Mass Effect Three. That's so, like well, no, Mass Effect, Mass Effect, Mass Effect Three boils down to like. Three, I think, very generic, very gen- yeah, very generic <laughs> endings. Um, yeah, but like that's but like this. You know, you, that's, that, that's like that's like three. sixty hours after you finish Mass Effect Two. Like it does, it hasn't, it hasn't, didn't ruin that experience for me. Like Mass Effect Two is still a brilliant game, which has tells it tell very much tells its own story. Like it, when it finishes, that's you know that's it. They kind of I think leave. I think in one of the DLC packs, um, there was a a hint of like what was to come in, in the third one, but. Like Mass Effect Two is very much its own self-contained story, and you know, like, I guess it depends on your own personal outlook. You can, you can, you can have the whole series or a whole franchise ruined for you if you don't like one thing. But you know, Mass Effect Two is still a great game, despite what they did in Three. Yeah, I mean, like, for, yeah, for a game that's very much you pick and choose kind of what happens and like who survives, who dies, etc., <laughs> etc. And like having it almost chosen for you after you've played it it's kind of like it does ruin the the experience of two something that i read in my googling um was the rpg <laughs> elements ripped out it was very much a streamlined um, yeah they took out i think the effects. first one the first one i think was very rpg i haven't played the first one but like for yeah. somebody who's for somebody who's not like super super i think i've never played like a real proper hardcore like, i guess maybe the witcher um rpg where it's like really I don't know. For me, that was quite enjoyable. I think where it's like the shooter, but then you could also kind of pick your loadout and kind of pick your mm-hmm. med, like your powers and that kind of thing. So yeah, it is a halfway house. I think like that did I think upset quite a few people, but I think it was really kind of based on the the power of the story it told, and, and you know, and, and like and, and it was it was fun as well. Like there were lots of varied missions and characters and and that kind of thing. So it wasn't just it wasn't just the story. The gameplay was pretty good. And like you do have quite a few different like the weapons and the biotics and the powers you've got you know and really well acted as well just as a for such a big game to have that kind of story i think it's it's rare to have like an rpg that size like at least on on console to have such a such a deep story i think with so many characters yeah i mean it's one of those again i um Played, so mm. <laughs> yeah, no, I missed, I missed that I mean, one. I, I mean, John, John, one. John mentioned uh, the uh, Metacritic score. I think um, eighty-six for Dead Space, eighty-eight for Starcraft, and ninety-four for Mass Effect. Not that that means anything, of course. I just wanted to throw it out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just means Dead Space was an underrated game. <laughs> oh. Okay, okay. Just to give us a, a little bit of closure on this, I'm just going to start quickly with Al. Al of the other two games, which one? Would you play first? Probably StarCraft. StarCraft, okay. Um, John, out of the other two games, which one would you play first? Would you I play a, a Dead Space or would you play a Mass Effect 2? Uh, Aliens or Tinder? Probably Paint Walls from the sounds of that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, in all honesty. Dead Space? Um, Dead Space, probably, to be honest. Dead Space. Uh, and Paddy, how about you? Uh, of the other two, which one would you play first? Probably StarCraft, just because it... Like even though I'd, I'd, my finger would hurt from all the incessant clicking, I think it sounds, <laughs> it does sound interesting. It's, and, it, and it sounds different. Like sounds, sounds like sounds like something I've never played before. Google South Korean Starcraft. You will be amazed. <laughs> Trust me. Safe right. search on or off. How many people <laughs> has that game killed? Right. Like a blind man at an orgy, I was going to have to feel things out. Uh, yeah, so that brings <laughs> us to the end of the um, uh, of the um, uh, debate. And uh, oh god, this is. And hard this one to be honest. Yeah. We've had we've had a lot of tricky ones in the past, and um, I think this is up there because there's none. Normally, I can sort of rule rule one out and then pitch two against and ask myself which one uh, would be the best. Um, I think I'm gonna have to give this one to Paddy. I think I think 
I think Me? out of everything I heard, I don't think I heard any justifiable reason why Mass Effect Two um, um, was a bad game. And I think, I think Al, your point about Mass Effect Three being crap has no bearing at all on 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 um, on on Mass Effect. You, you know, uh, Three. I think I think. Like if they released GTA Six, it was shit. Does still doesn't mean GT, the first GTA like uh, um, it was well, a bad the, game. The, the point was I do, like, the story. I do, of, I do see your point. It, that it, it was a choice, and you're doing your choices like leading you up to the end of it. But it doesn't change the experience that you have walking away from from Mass Effect Two. And yeah, I'd be fair. There wasn't many reasons about each of your games, and it was really. I think it really come down to personal, um, personal, personal bias. Um, and I think the real key thing that I thought about was your argument was like if I took the space out of all three games, which one would be hurt the most? And you think, well, actually, if I took Starcraft and put it on the Earth, but just had the same uh, same game, it would not make much a lot of a difference. If I took Owl's, Owl's game and put it on a on a research um research um research um research um a facility on earth it would be the same game but you know uh um mass effect 2 i think uh, um um paddy saying it's a um it's a it's a it's a space opera is absolutely um a spot on in the sense it, it's it's what everyone who's into space really wants it wants a crew to fly around with and all that kind of stuff it really is a lot of homage uh, to space. I think the space is the core part of the game, whereas you, your guys, it's very, um, very um, secondary. And I think that's really the the main reason why I went to him. Because when it come to the argument, you pretty much all um, are pretty even. So I couldn't choose. Um, so there we are. There we are. That is the end of this week. Um, this week's um, um, thing argument that I can't say. Uh, we really need to change the name <laughs> of the show um, because I can't say it. Uh, so yeah, uh, we've been Tristan Bardam, uh, Tristan Bardam uh, Gaming and this has been our weekly um, podcast. If you heard this on iTunes, you can find it on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Tristan Bardam uh, uh, Gaming. Uh, you can also, if you're watching it on YouTube, you can find it on iTunes if you want to hear it on the go. And we'll be um, back again with one of these next week. I have been Rob and we've had um, Paddy do a wave. Oh, we did a wink. Was nice. Uh, Al, and we've had... Jo- I'm pointing at you guys like on, on Skype, but I'm very clear that you guys are actually down here when it comes to the video. But And we've had John. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye.